This week, we're going to find that Wizards of the Coast just saved Hasbro. It saved Chris Cox. It saved Cynthia Williams. And Wizards of the Coast didn't have a choice. Wizards of the Coast this week will save Hasbro from certain catastrophe. Wizards of the Coast didn't have a choice. Hasbro was making them do it, but that's the way things are. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today, everyone, because the Q4 results are coming out. They're going to happen, and there's not much we don't already know. Cash-strapped Hasbro has made some bad choices, bad decisions, laid all their eggs in a couple of baskets, and the only thing keeping that company afloat is Wizards of the Coast. I bet now, when Hasbro looks back at paying $300 million, whatever it was, I think it was around $300 million, to buy Wizards of the Coast outright, just buy it outright, get the D&D license, get the popular trading card game. I think back then, Hasbro even acquired the rights to Pokemon, I think, until 2003 when they lost it. But they had a lot of good things going on there at Wizards of the Coast. And they sold the company to Hasbro. Hasbro overpaid apparently at the time as well, but that's where they were. Hasbro at the time had lots of cash and was looking to expand. Wizards of the Coast, a relatively new company, saw the flash of cash and took the deal. And now we are where we are. We're at where we're at and there's not much that's going to change or happen right now because this week... Chris and Cynthia have made some poor decisions, some poor choices that angered a lot of people. Angered a lot of people. And there's not much that's going to sink their ship because Wizards of the Coast is going to keep them afloat. Can you imagine being able to make a bad choice after another bad choice after another bad choice that definitely will do things to hurt your company, but knowing that the buoyancy of Magic the Gathering will actually keep the company afloat so that these wild far-flung ideas that if they take off well, you're going to look like, like a ninja. You're going to look amazing coming out of the darkness to save the day for your company. But at the same time, if things go bad, it's okay. You can go back to the bat cave and become a detective and try to figure things out again because you have enough money coming in from Wizards of the Coast and all of us price-sensitive players to keep you afloat. I don't think that if Hasbro never acquired Wizards of the Coast, never acquired them, and Wizards managed to get through those last few years, I bet Wizards of the Coast would have acquired Hasbro. Wouldn't that have been a twist to see that happen? I mean, at the time when Wizards of the Coast bought TSR, when they bought Dungeons & Dragons, Dungeons & Dragons was on the brink of bankruptcy. They didn't have a lot of money coming in. You know, you buy the books once in your lifetime. You never had to expand. And then look what happened. They buy a cash strap company. Hasbro sees that they start turning things around, comes in with a bucket full of cash, and buys Wizards of the Coast. And then year after year, as the company grew from a semi-independent, autonomous part of Hasbro, it is now incorporated into a divisional access point where Hasbro goes, money, 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 money. And here we are, coming around to the next quarter, that even with the 30th anniversary being one of the worst decisions in modern times, and no apology, no overprinting, no bad card quality, just price sensitive players, cocktail parties, and content creators talking about it. And they're still going to have their jobs probably and they're still going to get away with it. I find that fascinating because I don't think they would have made those deci decisions they made. They wouldn't have made the choices they made without knowing they had a good backbone on the company that could save them if things went south. Fascinating times to think. And as we go past the Q4, and we're looking now, Phyrexia all will be won, the way the market is. In the next month or two, they're going to start reporting on those numbers. And I don't know about you guys, wherever you are in the world, but pre-releases were maxed out at most locations I've checked in with. Box prices sold. Singles are through the roof right now. It's looking very good. People like the Phyrexian storyline. They like what's going on. They like the Borg taking over the multiverse. Let's bring back some Eldrazi or get my throws off Spardadia and take them right back. I don't know, but that's where we're at. They're going to be able to report in a couple of months that the sales are through the roof. And if they've kept to the same type of theory and plan with March of the Machines, it's going to go off as well. And with epilogue boosters, less packaging, 
less shipments, less weights, more products coming in, Wizards will start capitalizing again and everything will slowly fade to the backdrop memory, except for a few of us angry people on the internet, right? There'll be a few people who will comment on it, make videos on it. There'll be people being, there'll be people being nasty in the comment section saying how much they hate Wizards of the Coast, but the vast majority of players just want to move on, man. They just want to play the game and enjoy. And they're going to get that. Because after this quarter's done, and Chris and Cynthia sit down and have a cocktail party tea between the two of them, they'll say, I think we pushed it too far. I think we're watching that Mox Man too much. We realize we pushed it too far. And now we got to sit back for a year or two, Cynthia. We got to pad our pension plans. We got to pad that golden parachute by not upsetting the ARP apple cart too much and getting ourselves kicked out because we don't want to lose our jobs. We got to make sure we keep things cool. So we'll let Wizards save us this time. We'll scale back a bit. We'll lower production numbers a bit. We'll do a few heavy hitting cards here and there, get the players kind of amped up again on the hype train. The hate train's kind of off to the side right now. It's on a parallel track. It's not in direct confrontation with us. So this is good news for us, Cynthia. This is good news. And by the way, Cynthia, prepare the next Amazon dump. Because, you know, what? we got to move some more product, get those things off the books, and make ourselves... You guys picture the conversation of how it's going to be laid out. Because CEOs come and go. But before they go, they always get paid. They always get paid. Remember that. And they don't care how they get paid. They don't care what expense it comes at. Only the shareholders and investors and the board of directors can hold those people to account. And most times when they're about to do it, it's too late. So don't worry about this Q4. It's going to go horribly. It's good. They've got a sacrificial lamb. That guy's already being pitched out of it. They've already got plans on track for the upcoming set. They've already called the distributors. They've already called manufacturing. They've called Card to Monday. They've called everyone to say, whoa, whoa, we got to fix this. We got to slow things down. No official apology. Deniability fully, but we're going to slow things down secretly. Shh. Make them happy. Because this time, Wizards saved us. And if we sink Wizards of the Coast, if we actually grind it into nothing but pulp and juice of a black lotus laying on the ground with a little nachos and cheese dip on it, then we're just, we're out of our free money ride. We can't have that. We can't have that. So we got we to gotta scale back and prepare for the inevitable. That we're going to have to be in this longer than we thought we were. So let's, let's just sit back, have a cup of tea, have our fireside chat when we get to the Q1. 2023 and it's gonna be more positive Cynthia we're gonna be we're gonna be on the rock and boat that's where you're gonna find yourselves that's where we as players will be we'll be there waiting to buy the next product because it's good it's fun it's exciting we can't help ourselves but want to play the game because we love it so much and there'll be lots of players out there who say they're not buying anything and then secretly walk in and say hey how much for this box again I just want to I just want to get this one box here and take it with me very, and I'm, I mean, I'm still curious to see how that 30th anniversary stuff will turn out after this is all over and what will happen with all those cards. Where will they start turning up? Because you know they're not gone. They're not destroying that stuff. They're just going to find ways. I heard there was gifts going out for that stuff. and But some of that's going to be leaked eventually out. So I can't wait to see how that's all going to pan out. Anyway, I just want to touch base on this because as much as we want them to get in trouble for what they did, they're not going to. Because Wizards of the Coast saved them, because of that lucky purchase... Back in what, 1999? We are where we are right now. Hasbro probably wouldn't even be in existence if it wasn't for Wizards of the Coast at this point. With their sales dropping as much as they are, with the economy the way it is, they probably would have been, they would have lost so much market cap, they'd be gobbled up by somebody else. Interesting times. But anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out and listening to a guy who likes nachos and cheese ramble out stuff with a little Taco Tuesday on the side. And remember, Shop smart, shop S smart, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another awesome video because we're getting closer. Hey guys, a big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons on my channel who show their support each and every day. Phyrexia all will be one, but it's okay. The patrons saved me. Thanks again, guys, for being here. See you guys soon. Have an awesome day. Well, a happy Boomstick Evil Dead Army of Darkness day to you. Thanks again for shopping smart, shopping S smart, and remember, Clad to Veratu. <laughs> Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Guys, it's interesting to see when this stuff comes out and how it plays out. But I tell you right now, either way, 
forgetting how much we hate them, Phyrexia is a good product. It's fun. March the Machines, probably a good product. I haven't even seen the stuff yet, but I bet you it's going to be a good product because they're on a roll right now. They probably learned from some past mistakes. They're going to lower production down. I can see it happening and I can't wait to see how the values of some of this stuff changes in the next couple of years. I've already seen reserve list cards kind of turning. I've already seen stores kind of seeing an uptick. So you know what? Be warned, man. Be warned. Close attention to the channel. We're going to see what we can see in the next few weeks. It's going to be interesting. Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for hanging out. You can put a little bit of a Necronomicon Ex Mortis, the Book of the Dead, in the comment section. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.